Carolina Republican. Guess who that was? That was Mark Meadows. Remember Mark Meadows? He was the one who came up with the motion to vacate the chair for John Boehner. He said, get out. You're punishing people by removing them from committees, amongst other things. He had betrayed all of the issues that were dear to those who were conservative, open borders, uh, many other issues. And so he had a motion to vacate the seat. Everybody laughed at it, and then they found that Boehner really didn't have the votes. Well, Mark Meadows was removed from a subcommittee. Why? Because he opposed the Trans-Pacific Partnership, actually the the Fast Track Trade Authority. He was removed from that seat, not by John Boehner, but by Jason Chaffetz. So are things really going to change? Or is it simply another fresh face that they're going to put on there? There's only three people right now in the race. And that would be Kevin McCarthy, who's been endorsed by the establishment. You've got then Jason Chaffetz, who removed Mark Meadows from the committee because he opposed this unconstitutional process of fast track authority instead of a treaty process because he opposed the TPP. And then you've got one other fellow, which they don't really give much of a chance to winning. This guy is from is Representative Daniel Webster from Florida. He is the only other declared candidate in opposition. He is also one of the very few Republicans in the Congress that opposed the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Fast Track Trade Authority that would bring that in. So we've got one dark horse candidate at the moment that actually opposes this massive takeover of power, this restructuring of our government. Now, the other thing that you might have heard about Chaffetz in the last week is that he was also the subject of essentially a retaliation by the Secret Service. Remember, we had multiple violations of security protocol by the Secret Service, a lot of different scandals. His committee started investigating the Secret Service, and they decided that they would retaliate against him. And that has made a lot of congressmen, as well as senators, very concerned because of the arrogance of this bureaucracy, the Secret Service. But of course, that's just one of the bureaucracies that will go out there. If they will do that to him for investigating their incompetence, can you imagine how they blackmail senators and Supreme Court justices on a regular basis. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk about Obama's war crimes this last weekend, as well as the Obama administration pushing for a global police force. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Vote for Jeb, or you're just fucking stupid. Fool me, we can't get fooled again. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Your liver can be full of fatty deposits, built up toxins, and even dangerous objects known as liver stones. We worked with the top developers in the field of detox to take tried and true herbs and other compounds known to safely cleanse the liver and fuse it with the latest research and technological development on concentrating these ingredients to give you the maximum effect. Liver Shield is the only liver support product on the market that uses a patented Spigerex blend of powerful organic herbs that support detoxification. And when you visit InfoWars Lifetime, See the instructional video on how to do a six-day liver detox. This isn't a game, and let me tell you, the results are dramatic. Liver Shield is totally organic and made of the safest high-quality herbs. But that said, you need to consult your physician before you do the full detox. Liver Shield can also be used daily by itself for overall upkeep of the liver. Secure your Liver Shield today exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com for the lowest price available. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're going to crash and going to feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. 
We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. I love our candy. I love our video games. Lie, lie, lie. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockouts it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. And it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. This last Thursday, a mass murderer killed nine people at a college. This last Saturday, Obama and the Department of Defense deliberately and repeatedly attacked the hospital, killing not nine, but 22 people, nearly two and a half times the number of people that this mass shooter killed. This is a war crime. As RT reports, it is inexcusable, possibly even criminal, says the UN rights chief. There were 19 people, I know those that initially in the report, it was 12 staff, seven patients, uh, three children. Now that death toll has gone up. This is what they say, the seriousness of the incident is underlined by the fact that if established as deliberate in a court of law, an airstrike on a hospital may amount to a war crime. They say it's utterly tragic, excusable, and possibly a crime. Now this was against doctors without borders. They were operating in Afghanistan and Kunduz. They, uh, these attacks continued for more than 30 minutes after they were notified that they were under attack, after they contacted American and Afghan military officials in Kabul and Washington. This is what is so disturbing about it, and this is what makes it a crime. And as we reported this weekend on Infowars.com, patients were literally burning in their beds. Witnesses recall the horrific Kunduz uh, hospital airstrike. They say as we were trying to work out what was happening, there was more bombing. They say that it happened between 2.08 in the morning and 3.15 a.m. They say that it was repeatedly hit very precisely. The tragedy happened despite the fact that they had provided U.S. command with GPS coordinates of the hospital. And they had done this multiple times. The latest time was uh, September 28th, which is four or five days earlier. They say at first there was confusion and dust settling. We were trying to work out what was happening. Then there was more bombing. The bombs hit, and then we heard the plane circle around. There was a pause, then more bombs hit. This happened again and again. Exactly. Sounds like the attack on the USS Liberty by the Israeli Air Force. It was a deliberate attack then. It was a deliberate attack now. And as the calls about a war crime start to surface, not only from the UN, but from many different areas, NATO is investigating. The Department of Defense is starting to push back. They're saying that it was Afghan forces who called for the Kunduz airstrike. This is what they said on NPR. Now, that may be true. Nevertheless, it continued 
for 30 minutes after they were notified. So even if they call that in, even if the US command did not pay any attention to the information from the hospital saying that they had uh, gave them the exact GPS coordinates, still they continued the attack for 30 minutes. So it's not enough to blame the Afghan government and it's not enough to do what they did this weekend and that is to blame the Taliban for being there. They said in the initial releases and they continue to say this, unfortunately the Taliban have decided to remain in the city, knowingly putting civilians at risk of harm. Well, you know what, that doesn't excuse it. When you shoot hospitals, when you shoot up ambulances, when you shoot up medics, when you shoot up the Red Cross, that is a war crime. Remember when we had Manning show the leak the video of American forces shooting an ambulance. First, they shot a bunch of people who were not risks to anyone. They shot up, well, one of the people was carrying a camera. It was a Western cameraman. They shot these people up. Then as an ambulance came to help these people and they're loading them into the, into the van, you see the video of these guys laughing as they're shooting up the ambulance. What happened with that war crime? Well. They didn't prosecute any of the shooters. They didn't prosecute any of the commanders who allowed that to happen. Instead, they put Manning in jail and then went after Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. And I imagine we can see the same type of thing happening here. But Obama wants to come after your guns, the mass murder. Maybe we should have a waiting period on assassinations. Maybe we should have a waiting period on wars. Maybe we should have a declaration of war before we get into these. Now, the other part of this context is the unraveling of Afghan, the Afghanistan war. They say, is Kunduz the beginning of the end for Afghanistan? This is a Politico article where they say that America's deadly hospital strike points up how hard it's going to be to keep control from the air. They say a week ago, Kunduz, a provincial capital of 300,000 in northern Afghanistan, was not considered a of particular strategic importance in the war against the Taliban. But the fall of Kunduz to the Taliban for two days last week marks a new phase in the war and a critical test. Kabul is now threatened from the north. Of course, Kabul is the capital of Afghanistan. And they point this out. They say the paramount problem is not so much the competence of the troops as what is happening at a much higher level inside the Afghan government. You know, that's the same problem we face here in the United States, isn't it? Is corruption at the top. Corruption, exactly. They say morale problems flow directly from moral failures in the Afghan state, not the least the massive corruption that has plagued both Iraq and Afghanistan. That's why they're in trouble. We have that same kind of corruption in the United States as well. When McClatchy was reporting on this back and forth in Syria, they say even with translators, the US and Russia can't agree on the definition of terrorism. Remember the policy under Ronald Reagan? Where they were talking about how one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Well, today that would be one man's terrorist is another man's jihadi surrogate, because that's precisely what ISIS is. They create these jihadi surrogates, and these are real, real issues. These are real dangerous people. This is, these are, are not just fake uh, cookie cutters out here. These are, ISIS is truly a threat, but we need to understand that it was created by the United States. Equipped by the United States, trained by the United States, they brought in many of these jihadi terrorists that were fighting Russia. They were Chechen terrorists. That's one of the reasons why Russia is so adamant that they're going to take out the jihadi surrogates that we have created. This is a story from McClatchy, and they say the United States' uneasy alliance with Turkey and quote unquote moderate opposition groups requires American leaders to engage in verbal jujitsu. We would call that lying. When asked if the US-led air campaign is also targeting the Nusra Front or Al-Shram or other Al-Qaeda-linked groups, they said the fundamental problem is the US is trying to divorce its international anti-terrorism campaign from the rest of the Syrian civil war. In other words, it's blatantly a lie, it's hypocrisy. Everybody knows that we are working with Al-Qaeda just as we created the Mujahideen, which was Al-Qaeda, uh, Al then we create, uh, go from Al Qaeda, we rename it to ISIS, and yet it's still the same groups. They are our creation. They say it's very difficult, as we saw when the US trained new Syrian force went in and just got obliterated by Nusra. The rebels want to fight the regime, but not ISIS. And they go on and they talk about this is all despite uh, Assad's record. Well, what record would that be? I'm really not sure. We're told by Bloomberg that uh, Cameron is criticizing Syria calling him the butcher Assad. 
This is nothing but the same kind of silly rhetoric that we heard from George H.W. Bush when he went after strongman Manuel Noriega. We don't have to save the world from Assad. He's not attacking anybody. It's our allies, Saudi Arabia, that have attacked Yemen, their neighbor to the south. Donald Trump comes out and says uh, he supports Putin bombing the hell out of ISIS.